Now that you are a master of writing linear equations out of section 2.3, we're going to move into section 2.4, which just gives us a little bit of an extension with writing equations, but with more specific or special lines of parallel lines and perpendicular lines to those that are described. So, um, by definition, two non-intersecting lines that lie in the same plane are parallel. They do not cross ever. Think of railroad tracks. Um, if two lines never cross, then they should have the same steepness or slant. So if I have two lines that are like this, and in the terms of slope, in order for them to never, never cross, that steepness has to be the same. Well, that steepness was referred to as our slope. So therefore, parallel lines have the same slope, or maybe I put equal there. They have equal. Let's put that as an equal. Sorry, I'm going to undo that and put equal slopes that's a better mathematical term okay so if i give you a problem like this or if the book gives you a problem like this to work we're going to write the equation of a line that passes through this point we always need a point and a slope and is parallel to those lines uh, y equaling 3x plus 1. so if you recall our point slope form is this and what we need is a point and a slope. They gave me my point. I'm going to plug the 5 in here and the negative 2 in here. But I need to steal the slope away from this equation. So in the equation y equals mx plus b here, our slope is what's with the x. So therefore m equals 3. But I want the line parallel to that. Well, we already discussed that they have the same steepness. Therefore, my parallel slope is also 3. So you just have to kind of pull that information from what's given to you. So let's write our equation of the line described. I'm going to take 5 back into here, so let's go y minus 5 equals. The slope we're going to use is that parallel slope of 3 times x minus the x value, which is a negative 2, so double negatives become a positive, and that becomes a plus 2. So we want to express the equation in point slope form. Done. Check. But then we also need to get it into slope-intercept form, which is to solve for y equals. So let's first distribute. I'm going to rewrite y minus 5. We get 3x plus 6, and then I'm going to add the 5 over. So y equals 3x plus 11 is the other condition. That is our slope-intercept form that they're looking for. Okay. All right, let's turn it over. Let's look at it, giving it to us kind of in this form. We were going to write an equation for line L, which is this red line here, in point slope form and slope intercept form. So I have the point 3, 4, and it looks like that I'm parallel, L is parallel to that line Y equaling negative 2X. So here's my point 3, 4. I need to find a slope. Well, we need to turn to the other information they gave us, which is this line. If I have y equals mx plus b, there's no plus b here, mx plus b, m is going to be this negative 2. So of this line, m equals negative 2, and if we are parallel to each other, that means that the slopes or the steepness is exactly the same. Therefore, the slope that I need to write my equation is going to be exactly the same as that negative 2. So, point slope form, y minus the 4 equals my slope times x minus the x value, which is 3. And that is one part of what they're requesting. And the second part, slope intercept form, we need to get y equals. So, I'm going to distribute. Be careful here because it is a negative 2. Negative 2x, negative 2 times negative 3 is a positive 6. And then I'm going to add 4 to both sides and get y equals negative 2x plus 10. So the extension here on this, we did exactly this in section 2, 3, but the extension now is that we're working with parallel slopes, and so it should be easy peasy because you just have to steal it from that line that it's parallel to, okay? Now if I ended up giving you points there instead of a line equation, then you'd have to use your slope formula to find your slope. So it's easily done. You have all the tools to do it. You just have to put all the pieces together. Okay, so that one's the easier of the two because parallel slopes are the same. <clears throat> but when I talk about perpendicular lines from geometry that should ring a bell, 
These are two lines that intersect at a right angle, which remember are 90 degrees, are said to be perpendicular. That's the definition of it. Now, the symbol that we use for perpendicular is an upside down T. If I want to draw an, uh, the coordinate plane is perpendicular. That's perpendicular lines right there. We have a right angle, okay? Now, perpendicular slopes are not the same. Okay, even if I draw perpendicular going sideways, where that's a right angle, they are definitely not the same. In this case, one's positive, one's negative. Here, this one's vertical, that one's horizontal. The slopes are not the same. By definition, perpendicular slopes are what we refer to as opposite reciprocals because they do have a property <clears throat> that whenever you multiply them together, you get negative 1. Okay, so opposite reciprocals. So you have to do two things. When we talk, look at each one of these words, they're going to tell you what they are. Um, reciprocals, let's start with that first. Reciprocals of a fraction is basically the flip of that fraction, okay? So if I have two-thirds, the reciprocal is three-halves. So the first thing we want to do is flip the fraction. If it's a whole number, that would be like five. You have to put it as five over one and flip to be one-fifth. And then to get the opposite of a number, then we have to change the sign. Okay? So to get a perpendicular slope, two things. To get a parallel slope, no things, zero things, because they are the same. So given these um, slopes that we have here, we want to find the perpendicular slopes. Just do this exercise with me, and then we're going to write the equations. So if m is 1 half perpendicular slope, I have to flip this fraction. Now when I flip it, it becomes 2 over 1, and I have to change the sign, which it comes from a plus to a minus, but I can rewrite this and simplify that as negative 2. That would be my perpendicular slope. Perpendicular slope of this, I have to flip that fraction as 4 thirds and change it from a negative to a positive. I'm not going to write the plus, therefore... 4 thirds is going to be my perpendicular slope. If I have a slope of 4, this is what I was just talking about, you always want to put that over 1, perpendicular slope is going to be flipping that fraction and changing the sign. Therefore, negative 1 fourth is my slope there. And my perpendicular slope of this guy over here, it is an integer. Again, we can put it over 1. We're going to flip that fraction, make it 1 third, change the sign, to make that positive, and that is our slope. Okay, so that you need before we can move on to actually finding the equation of a line in this example. So write the equation of a line passing through our negative 2, negative 6, and we are perpendicular to the line whose equation is in general form this time, x plus 3y minus 12 equals 0. So here's our point we need our slope. In order to find our slope of this perpendicular line, we must steal it from this equation. Unfortunately, this is not into our nice y equals mx plus b form where we can pull the m. So I'm going to get it there. I'm going to subtract the x and add the 12 so that I can attempt to get y by itself. So if I subtract the x, that becomes a minus x. Adding the 12 becomes a plus 12. Then I'm going to divide by the number next to the y value to get y by itself. Now, here, this is like a negative 1x, so I'm going to extract that fraction away from that x. Now, negative 1 over 3, I can't reduce that, so the best I can write is negative 1 third x. I can't reduce this to be a plus 4. Who cares about the 4? I don't care about the 4. This is what I'm concerned about here, okay? That is the slope of that equation. If I wanted to write the parallel line to that through negative 2, negative 6, then I would be done. I don't have to think about it. I'm going to use negative 1 third. But I do have to think about it here because it's asking me for the perpendicular line. So I need to know what the perpendicular slope of this. We have to flip and change the sign. So flipping becomes 3 over 1. Changing the sign becomes a positive. Therefore, I can reduce that just to 3. So I'm going to use this and this point to write my equation. So let's start with point slope. y minus a negative 6 becomes a plus 6 equals my perpendicular slope, which is 3, times x minus the x value, which is a negative 2, 
that becomes a plus 2. And this is my point slope form. That's one request. Then I need to distribute and get y. Oh, hang on, point slope form, which is that. And then we need general form. Whoop, they threw me for a loop there. We want general form, which is exactly this. ax plus by plus c equals 0. So let's do that. Let's first distribute. We have to get rid of those parentheses. 3x plus 6 is what I get there. Now, I basically just need that equal to 0. Now, I will tell you in general form that your a value is normally positive. So if this x value is positive, let's keep it on this side. Let's subtract 6 over and subtract the y over. And therefore, I need... Oops, sorry, sorry, sorry. Get rid of that. 3x, so I'm going to rewrite the 3x. I'm going to subtract the y minus y. Now, when I subtract the 6, that gives me a 0 anyway, and then I have 0 on this side. So you could do plus 0 if you want, equals 0, but this would be our general form. This one just has a c value that is 0. That's what makes it look different and not have 1, 2, 3, 4 terms like we have here. Okay? All right, very good. Let's write an equation in slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. Make sure you fill the request as to what form they want of the line which passes through this point. So there's my x1, y1. And is perpendicular to the line that has x-intercepts of 3 and y-intercept of negative 9. Now, here, it's not an equation. They give me points x-intercept of 3, y-intercept of negative 9. We're looking at this line here. So I want to be perpendicular through the line that goes through negative 5, 6. So it's up here somewhere. So the line that we're looking for looks something like that, possibly. Okay, just to sketch it through. Now, the problem is, is I need what this slope is. Now, there's two ways to do this, and I kind of sketch this graph. Um, one way is if you sketch this graph and look at the rise over the run to find the slope, you could do that. We know it's going to be positive because it's rising left to right. I went up 9 and over 3 to get to that point. So this is 9, this is 3. Therefore, my slope is rise over run, which is 3. Now, if you don't like to do that with the graph, we can definitely write these two things as points and then use our formula. So this is the point 3, 0. This is the point 0, negative 9. So if I go y minus y over x minus x, what we did in the last section, negative 9 minus 0 over 0 minus 3, we can now find a number to that as negative 9 over negative 3. Two negatives make a positive. 9 divided by 3 is 3. So again, we get the same answer, two different ways to do it. But remember, this is not the slope we want. We want the slope of this line that is perpendicular to that. Therefore, the perpendicular slope, 2, 3, is I need to flip that to make that 1 third and change the sign. Now we become negative. Okay? So this is what we need to do. I need to take this slope and this point, even though it says that I need slope-intercept form, you can't start there. We need to start at our point-slope form, just like what we've done, and then get y by itself. Whoops. So let's do y minus the y value, which is 6, is equal to my slope, which is going to be negative one-third. We found it over here. Times x minus a negative 5 becomes a plus 5. And we need y equals mx plus b. So I need to distribute my slope first. So I get y minus 6 equals negative 1 third x. Now this negative 1 third times that positive 5 over 1. Nothing can cross cancel. So go straight across as negative 5 thirds. And then what we need to do is add 6 to this side to get y by itself. So I get y equals negative 1 third x. And then I need to figure out what this is. Well, 6 over 1 times by 3 times by 3 gives me 18 thirds minus 5 thirds is what I'm looking at. 18 thirds minus 5 thirds. Keep the bottom, change the top, gives me a 13 thirds. So that's what I'm going to add at the end. Use your calculator if you need to in order to figure that out. But that is the form they want it to end in. 
y equals mx plus b gives us our answer. Okay. All right, and our last little bit here, this is a short, nice section. Um, this is a special case here. We want to write an equation in slope-intercept form of the line which passes through negative 2, 6 and is parallel to the line and perpendicular to the line x equaling negative 4. So, x equal to negative 4 from last section, that is a special line. There's no y in there. So, we have to determine or remind ourselves x equals negative 4 always. Here is where x equals negative 4. And that is a special vertical line that goes through at x equaling negative 4. So, there's our vertical line. But we want to go through the point negative 2, 6. Let's make that 6. Here's the point I want to go through. Now, I need this first part, A, to be parallel to that line. So if I'm going to go through this point parallel to this line, that means I need a vertical line that goes through that point. That vertical line has the same form of equation as this except for where are we going through now. We're not going through negative 4, we're going through negative 2. Therefore, the equation is x equals negative 2. Part B then says, I need the perpendicular line to this vertical. We need to form a 90 degree angle there. If I'm not vertical and I'm 90 degrees, then it better be a horizontal line through that point. And there's lots of other things that you can do. You can do y, y minus y equals m times x minus x to get a point slope form, but you don't have to here. If you remember that on a horizontal line, it is y equal to some number. Well, what y value are we going through on the y-axis? In this case, that was at negative 2, 6 that we went up there. So this is the equation, y equal to 6 as my horizontal line. So, some of these ones with special cases, you don't even have to use formulas on. You can just kind of graph it a little bit, and hopefully that will remind you of what we're talking about and how to get that equation, okay? So, sometimes there may be special cases like that that you don't have to do a lot of work on. It's just a graph would help you in that case. So, all right, very good. So, this is our last little bit in Chapter 2 on lines. Our next section that we're heading into is a lot of graphing stuff where we get our transformations just by looking at a, an equation and knowing what to do with that. So that's going to be very, very important for you to be able to kind of graph. So um, until next time.